Hi, this is chapter 2 of the second SARS tutorial for site recording. In the first chapter we completed uh, the first se section which is creating a site and now we will move on to the site recording. As I said in the first chapter we have a uh, one-to-many relationship between sites and recordings. So in order to complete uh, the first site recording you would normally the first section of the basic site fields and then move straight on to a new recording. And let's do that. So click on new recording and now you'll see all the fields that are you probably more familiar with in capturing a site. There are various tabs um, and the general section applies to all sites and then you have subsets so the structures generally used for buildings, archaeology, rock art, and then paleontology, and then images and attachments at the end. Um, we're still working on the fields for paleontology, and uh, at this stage uh, we have a very good field set for late Stone Age, Middle Stone Age archaeological sites, but not for Iron Age sites yet, so we, that's still in development. Uh, with probably still a bit more work is also required under, for, for the structures. Um, these fields will of, will improve over time and um, so we will hopefully update the tutorial once we've finalized um, fields in other areas uh, that need a bit of work. But today we're looking at uh, recording a rock art site and uh, this is quite complete. So let's finish the first section under the general tab. So your recording date, if you tick the show end date box, you can record from one day to the next. So you might be at a site for a week or a few days or it might apply for a date and time. So let's say the 1st of August and perhaps we started at 10.30 in the morning and finished the same day at 10.45. Okay. For the dates and times, we find it quite useful to record the time um, because the photographs taken often fall into that range and it's easier to match up sites to photographs at a later stage if you do this. The uh, project title, um, I'll use the eCrag group as this example. Um, this is very useful again because that links back to a set of members uh, in your uh, group content type and um, it's, a, it's a useful reference later down, down the line to, to link back uh, to grouping projects together. The case reference hi, uh, is used for um, uh, heritage cases. So when archaeologists or heritage practitioners do impact assessments, they will be using this field to link back the site recording that they're doing to the, the heritage case um, that they're applying for. Um, normally this is left blank if you're not doing impact assessments. Okay, right, then you've got alternative code, alternate name, common name. These are three fields that give you uh, quite a lot of flexibility in naming your sites. And remember the site recording is a one-to-many relationship, so you could theoretically have many, many different names for the same site. Um, I think three fields are ample for a site recording. So um, in this case, we might make the common name, um, say, Eland Torsos or something like that, something that you remember about the site and that um, stuck out in your mind. Okay, recorders, this, these are all the people that attended the site recordings, not just the person jotting down the site record or the person capturing onto the system because this user is automatically logged behind the scenes anyway. So let's uh, link um, a few people. Um, uh, let's do, I think, myself. Okay, let's add another one. And remember that in the group tags, you need to check the site recorder. Um, flag because uh, they won't come up in the filters unless you do so. Again, as, as in other sections of SARS, you can click search and this will give you a screen showing all the people um, that you can choose from um, and you can choose their surnames and names and so on. 
Okay, and if they're not available in the list and they're not in the search box either, they probably don't exist yet in the system, so then go to create people and add that person to the database. For directions, this is just the directions to sites, so we might say something like um, follow the um, northern stream for 50 meters from site A. Um, the site is on the northern bank, something like that. Okay, and site comments. The WYSIWYG editor is enabled for this because we find import, importing old site records, the site comments is one of the most commonly used fields where the entire site has been written up in one paragraph. And so we've enabled bold and formatting tags to be applied to those fields. Um, so you might, for site comments, describe something along the lines of um, this site is an overhang top of a rock shelf um, with a clear view of the southern mountains. Something like, along those lines. Okay, and admin comments is only used for administrative issues related to the site recording process. So you might say um, uh, need to call up the digital photos from the backup hardware. Um, anyway, or it might be um, possibly recorded before by John Demo. Okay. Right, then the recording media, just tick the boxes that apply, usually digital photos at this point, um, but if you're dealing with archives, the other fields are available, and we won't give a revision message. I'll go back to top, and I'm going to complete the rest of my archaeological fields. So I'm going to move on to archaeology. I can ignore structures, and I can ignore paleontology. Uh, I'm only recording an archaeological site for GR43. Remember, we tick the deposit artifacts and rock art in the base site. So I'm going to make this an LSA site, so later Stone Age, and then physical site type, it's an overhang. It could be multiple, so we could add overhang and perhaps a boulder, perhaps the site comprises two components, um, or a rock wall. If the overhang merges into a rock wall, um, you know, it's up to you. You can use the multiple fields as you need to. Um, also for the broad age category you may, may have LSA and MSA and all others. Okay. And uh, width, depth and height, we might have something along the lines of 36 meters by 4 by 4 meters. Open sites, those are generally for open site scatters. Um, then you would ignore the top three and just simply put the uh, dimensions with them. Um, length of a, an open site scatter. Orientation, uh, it's pick east, northeast, and um, again you can add others as well, so part of the shelter might face um, east, northeast, or east, um, generally you only put one in there for the direction it generally faces. Location type, um, does it sit in an open area or kloof, and is it low, medium, or high in that context? and is it easy to reach? It's fairly subjective fields. Um, the deposit info, okay, just try and describe the deposit if there is any there. Um, and then the deposit depth, just give an estimate. And we might say um, generally Okay, and then deposit disturbance field is used for anything like cattle have clearly been using the site and dung was on the floor. Okay, uh, you might have vegetation disturbance, moles, um, termites, and other examples. Uh, stone artifacts list. Uh, again, you can quickly tick through the, the raw materials that were found. So let's pick those. And CCS is crypto crystalline silicate. 
and then the diagnostic artifacts if any I might have found um, an upper grindstone for instance and maybe a lower grindstone at the site and these diagnostic artifacts lists will most likely grow we've only put a few in at this stage